The term specific gravity for a substation battery cell refers to the density of the electrolyte in the cell in relation to the density of water. A cell's specific gravity is normally an indication of its state of charge. This part of the program will look at specific gravity testing of substation battery cells. The key points that will be addressed include the purpose of checking cell specific gravity, the basic steps for checking cell specific gravity, and the effect of electrolyte temperature on the specific gravity of a cell. As you may know, the electrolyte in a cell is composed of sulfuric acid and water, and the specific gravity of a charged lead acid cell is typically around 1.210. You may also know that as a cell discharges, the specific gravity of the electrolyte decreases because sulfuric acid leaves the electrolyte and combines with the lead in the plates. As the cell is recharged, the specific gravity increases because the sulfuric acid is driven off the plates and back into the electrolyte. So specific gravity testing is a useful tool for determining the state of charge of a cell. Specific gravity is measured using an instrument called a hydrometer syringe. Most hydrometer syringes have the same basic parts. At one end is a rubber nozzle that's inserted into the cell. At the other end is a rubber squeeze bulb for drawing electrolyte into the body of the hydrometer. The body is a glass barrel. Inside the barrel is a weighted float with a graduated scale. The scale markings indicate values of specific gravity. In this example, the scale is marked off in increments of 0 0.002. When specific gravity is checked, all required safety equipment should be worn and all required safe working practices should be followed to the letter. To measure cell specific gravity, the syringe nozzle is inserted into the cell. The bulb is squeezed and released to draw a sample into the barrel. Some cells have a sampling tube. If electrolyte is taken from a sampling tube, the first sample is discharged into the vent well. Specific gravity isn't read from the first sample, because the electrolyte in the sampling tube doesn't mix with and isn't representative of the rest of the electrolyte in the cell. A second sample is drawn for the specific gravity reading. While a sample is being drawn, the syringe is held vertically so the float doesn't touch the sides of the barrel. Enough electrolyte is drawn to lift the float off the bottom of the barrel, but not so much that the float hits the top of the barrel. If the specific gravity is high, the float will ride high in the sample. If the specific gravity is low, the float will sink lower into the electrolyte. Once the float steadies, the specific gravity is read off the scale at the surface of the electrolyte. The specific gravity reading here is 1.222. This is not necessarily the value that's recorded. Specific gravity is affected by temperature, so the reading may need to be corrected for the temperature of the electrolyte. Electrolyte temperature may be checked using a cell thermometer. Here the cell temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. When electrolyte temperature increases, its specific gravity decreases because warmer liquids are less dense than cooler liquids. When the temperature decreases, the specific gravity increases. The normal or standard reference temperature for electrolyte is 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. To get an accurate specific gravity reading, the specific gravity is corrected by adding 0 0.001 to the hydrometer reading for every three degrees above 77 degrees Fahrenheit. For every three degrees below 77 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 0.001 is subtracted from the specific gravity reading. Some cell thermometers have a specific gravity correction scale opposite the temperature scale. The correction scale here is marked in thousandths. In this example, the electrolyte temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The correction factor for this temperature is about minus 3. So 0 0.003 is subtracted from the specific gravity reading of 1.222 for a corrected specific gravity of 1.219. This is the value that is recorded for the cell. After the specific gravity reading is taken, the electrolyte is returned to the same cell from which it was taken 
and the specific gravity of the next cell can be taken. As with voltage testing, IEEE standard 450 recommends checking pilot cell specific gravity once a month and all cell specific gravities at least once per quarter. Specific gravity should be checked before water is added to a cell because the water doesn't immediately mix with the electrolyte. Under normal float charge conditions, it may take six to eight weeks for the water and electrolyte to thoroughly mix. In addition, specific gravity readings should not be taken during or immediately after a battery is given an equalizing charge. The reason is that it takes time for the sulfuric acid from the plates to mix with the electrolyte. So the specific gravity will continue to increase for a period of time after the cells have been fully charged. For this reason, specific gravities should not be checked until the battery has been on normal float charge for at least 72 hours after an equalizing charge. After cell specific gravities are corrected for temperature, they can be evaluated in several ways. One way is to identify the highest and lowest cell specific gravities and determine the difference between them. The difference is compared to high and low cell specific gravities from previous tests. A noticeable increase in the differences may mean an equalizing charge is needed to raise the specific gravity of the weaker cells. Another way to evaluate cell specific gravities is to determine the average cell specific gravity. Each cell specific gravity is then compared to the average. According to IEEE standard 450, if any cells fall below the average by 0 .010 or more, the battery should be put on an equalizing charge. IEEE standard 450 also states that an equalizing charge should be given if the average specific gravity of all cells drops more than 0 .010 from the average installation value. Finally, it's a good practice to regularly disassemble and wash the hydrometer syringe with soap and water. This helps prevent a buildup of sulfuric acid that can cause small errors in specific gravity readings. Specific gravity tests, if done at the right time and when properly corrected for temperature, give a good indication of the state of charge of the cells in a battery. Now, while specific gravity and voltage tests indicate the state of charge of the cells in a battery, they don't tell you if the battery can deliver the necessary power when it's needed. Two tests that do are the integrity and capacity tests. These two tests will be covered in the next part of this program.